this moment in this place I remember who I am and fear and worry fall away from me I open my eyes and see there is only There is only love, love that heals, love that sets us free, there is only, sing that chorus again, ready, there is only love, there is only Love that heals, love that sets us free. There is only love. That the substance of God that each and every one of us is and that we are in the midst of every single day in this universe, in this planet, that there is only love. That is the reality of who and what we are and what we are walking through in life. A journey to learn how to love ourselves more, to love our neighbors, and to build, a, build and deepen our relationship with the Spirit of God. So right now I invite you to make yourselves comfortable in your chairs. Take a deep breath again and exhale out and just feel the energy of the day just fall away. You know, move your neck around so that your neck is relaxed. Because sometimes when we think too much, we stress out our brains as well as our necks. And we just want to loosen that up and loosen our shoulders up as we become more receptive and responsive and obedient to God, to the power of love. And right now I would like for you all to imagine a beautiful white light, luminous light streaming down into your crown chakra. This is your connection. Use the power of your imagination. Visualize this light. Albert Einstein said, the power of imagination is more powerful than the intellect. Because in the power of our imagination, we can see things begin to manifest in our lives. Because first it starts out as a thought then a vision and a lot of positive spiritual miracle grow and that is our attention and the divine idea and in the middle of your head is the pineal gland and they say that is where our faith faculty center is the power of faith. Can you feel the light entering your crown chakra, the top of your head? And see it go down into the middle of your brain. And visualize this beautiful light spinning around the pineal gland, your faith faculty. It's cleansing, it's purifying. It's removing all false beliefs that you may have that you are ready to let go of. It is enlightening you. In your journey. And it 
keep spinning around. Just calling forth the faculty of faith. Affirm to yourself, I have faith that God is at work in my life. I have faith in God that God is at work in my life. I have faith in myself that I will always do the next right thing. I have faith that I am happy, joyous, and free in the Spirit of God. My faith makes me stronger. My faith makes me stronger. My faith shows me the kingdom of God. Faith grows my consciousness of God. I have faith that I am doing the very best that I am every moment of every day in every way. Feel that faith center pulsating with the light. Affirm to yourself, I know that I am the light of the world. I know I am the light. I am the light of God manifesting. Dear God, we thank you for this Holy Communion time with you. We heard you speak, we felt you, we experienced you, and we thank you for that greatest joy. And so it is. Amen.
thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So what do you think the lesson's on today? The mustard seed, <laughs> the mustard seed and faith. Isn't that a great story? Well, faith is described in unity as the perceiving power of the mind linked to shape substance, the power to do the seemingly impossible. See, we might think things are impossible for us humanly, yes, but nothing is impossible without God. It talks about that throughout the scriptures, right? Yeah. And it's a magnetic power when we really say, I have faith in this. I have faith that I am being guided and directed in my life. We're calling it forth. We're calling it into action. And, you know, we have the pineal gland and then we have the pituitary gland. And that's the power of imagination. So think of those two working together. If you can visualize your good and you have faith in it, what's going to happen? You're going to begin to vibrate that energy and it's going to become made manifest in your world. Am I right? Yes. God, I'm glad you're all with me and you're awake. <laughs> So, it's about having faith in the invisible realm to bring it forth into the physical realm. And that's what it's, Jesus talks about in the Lord's Prayer, as in heaven, uh, as on, yeah. Earth, it's in heaven, right. So, whatever we're thinking, it goes up to heaven and it will come out here. It's called thought manifestation. It's, yeah, I mean, sometimes we want it, but maybe I'm the only one that wants it like that fast, like, but I know I'm not the only one. And faith is to me is a deep inner knowing and that I can trust God. And, but I think it's our ego that gets in the way that says, oh no, who, yeah, who do you think you are? Oh, no, God's not going to do that for you. Why would God want to do that? For, does God even like you? <laughs> You know, that ego comes up and it says crazy stuff. But Jesus used the analogy of the mustard seed in two different ways. One day he was speaking to a group of people and asked them, what is the kingdom of God like? Have you ever stopped and pondered that? You know, and, and I'll be honest, when I was working on this sermon, this lesson really, you know, I asked God, do I really think about what, you know, the, the kingdom of heaven is like? Now, I asked dying people, well, what do you think heaven's like? And they say, oh, well, I don't know. I haven't been there. You know, I really don't know. So, you know, I never thought about it. Those are some of the answers I get. And you know what? I have forgotten to ask myself that question. What do I think the kingdom of heaven is like? And you know what? The kingdom of heaven is a consciousness that we live in. It's where God's absolute good provides. That was from Luke 13, 9, 19, I'm sorry. They had various opinions about the kingdom back then. And I think if we went around the room here and said, what do you think the kingdom of heaven is like? We'd have all different answers, wouldn't we? Some, you know, think it's a beautiful garden. Some think it's, you know, that it's, well, I feel it's behind my human comprehension. I, I've shared with you that I listen to a lot of near-death experience podcasts. And everybody comes back and everybody has a different perception. And, but they have one thing in common. They say it's just so hard to describe because it's so beautiful. It's something that you really have to experience. And when we build that mustard seed, it's the, one of the tiniest seeds there is. But if you plant it and you nurture it, is what Jesus is saying. You plant it and you nurture it. It's, it's going to start to grow. And it's going to turn into something very large. And isn't that something that we want? We want to live life in a large way, not like egotistically, 
but we want to live life in a large way that where we really enjoy our lives, that we really enjoy what we do for a living, that we really enjoy our grandkids, and we sometimes like our own kids, but we had to have them in order to get grandchildren. <laughs> Somebody once asked me, how come we had to have kids to get grandchildren? I said, I don't know, take it up with God, you know. <coughs> so I think it's a powerful statement, to, you know, to the kingdom of heaven is at hand, Jesus said. At hand. It's within us. And all of the parables mainly go back to the kingdom of God and what it's like. Well, the more we nurture that that um, mustard seed, the larger it becomes, the more it grows, the more it unfolds, and that's us. The more that we trust God, have faith in God, the more we grow in consciousness of God. And that is the kingdom of God. We start to feel better about ourselves. We start feeling happy. We start healing, feeling joyous. We start. A, we find a new freedom and a new happiness in life, don't we? Because we're not carrying around all those burdens because we know God's taking care of it. And we say to God, God, you know, if there's something more I need to do in this situation in my life, just do it through me. That's how I handle it. Instead of going, oh, should I be doing that? I'll drive myself crazy. I will have the wor World War III going on in my head with my ego. No? Yes. Is this God or is this me? I don't know. Oh, my God. All right, let it go for now, Patty. Blah, blah, blah. Well, they say if it comes back three times in your mind, you need to do it. Well, yeah, I got that thought in my head. So, what? you know, I keep thinking about it. So it's easy to get that three count. So I don't trust it anymore. So I say, God, if there's more that I need to do, just do it through me. And you know what? God usually ends up doing it through me. And I don't have to worry about it. And that's building my faith faculty. You can build. You might have your own little ways of building your faith faculty to building your faith inside of you. And what is the kingdom of God? It's the inner consciousness of the presence of God within us. The kingdom was fully established in Jesus. Do you have faith in yourself that you could be like Jesus? Yeah, when we stop to think about it, somebody asks us, yeah. Okay, so what do we do daily to be more like Jesus? Pray. Pray. Meditate. Love people, you know, giving of ourselves, giving of our financial resources, you know, giving um, things that we don't use away that are still good and not broken. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. We don't have to wait until the clothes don't have any more color in them to give them away. <laughs> that they're so washed out, even, you know, the homeless wouldn't want to wear it. You know, they want to feel good about themselves. Don't you? I, I mean, I want to feel good about God, and I want to feel good about me. And, you know, there are many who have caught a glimpse of this inner kingdom, and I know all of you have. That's why we're here every Sunday. We want to be fed. We want to be inspired. You know, we want to show up and let our light shine and be here for other people and to enjoy the coffee and the tea and the water and the popcorn and the cheese and the crackers and the nice munchies that we have after service and, and, and the hospitality of the church and the companionship of other people of like mind. You know, and there are many who have a superficial awareness, mostly intellectual, of the kingdom. And, you know, I talked a little bit about it last week. You know, some people think that if we have big or bigger things in life and manifesting it, that we're really experiencing the kingdom of God or the presence of God. But that's a minute part, don't you think? Don't, don't you want more than just the materialism? 
And then there are people, I have a dear friend, she's a minimalist. I go, don't we have any pictures in this house? <laughs> Why? I like the white walls. I go, I feel like I'm in a hospital. <laughs> they even have pictures now on the walls. <laughs> but do you understand what I'm saying? We can celebrate in our good and celebrate that, you know, we're, we're living life that we're financially stable in our lives and we have faith that God is going to provide for us in our retirement, that, we, that God is going to take care of us as we get older. And that was something I really had to work through. I don't know about you, but sometimes getting older is not that much fun. And I got to find the fun in getting older. Because we all know I don't act my age. And I don't want to. Because I want to have fun and I want to have joy and I want to share my joy with other people. So, but we must know that the, that the kingdom is beyond the materialistic world. You know, Easter's coming up, and even Judas had a false idea of what the kingdom was. And you'll find out, he really didn't betray Jesus. He wanted to hurry Jesus up. Because he thought the kingdom was supposed to be here on earth. And we're going to talk about that next month. And then he felt so bad, he hung himself. How many times do we beat ourselves up for making the wrong choices? We don't go out there and hang ourselves like Judas did, but you know, you understand what I'm saying? But beating ourselves up is not a healthy attitude. It's not a healthy way of being. And in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus uses the mustard seed in still another way. The disciples asked him to increase their faith, and he did not do it. Ooh, ooh! He did not give them a formula. He didn't say, "Say this affirmation a thousand and ten times, and your faith will be developed." No, he did not do that. It's when we take a seed of truth, and the seed of truth can be when we're going to uh, through a challenging time that we say, "You know, God is good." God is working behind the scenes of this situation. God is good and God is at work. You know, that's, that's calling that faith faculty out into action and we're growing. And when we slip back and we're starting to feel negative again or we're hopeless again or just bad about ourselves again, we, we can go back to that. That seed of truth. God is good. I am good. I am made in the image and likeness of God. I am completely good. Now, I might not always show the best behavior, but nobody does. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Especially when we're kids. We just want to aggravate our parents just a little, you know. And we know it's going to aggravate them, so we do it. And then there's times that we do things and go, oh, wow, can't do that one again. Mom really got upset, yeah, you know. But faith is something that only God can increase in us because we're practicing the principles. We're practicing the promises. We're practicing that we know the truth is going to set us free. Because everything in the Gospels that Jesus talked about is really simple, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, I can do this. Except for when the rubber really hits the road and, you know, and you really have to apply it. And then sometimes we get weary or worn out or we, we talk to people. You know, it's just like the story of Job. His friends are telling, I'll just curse God and get it over with for bringing you all this tragedy in your life. But Job did not do that. He still had faith in God that God was going to do him right. Even though he took away all his prosperity, he took away all his children, his wife died, he lost everything. He got diseased in his body. But he would not curse out God because he had faith that God was going 
to renew the years that the locusts ate away. He knew God was going to take care of him. And that is something that can really build the kingdom of God in our minds and in our hearts to know that if we stand firm in truth, that kingdom, that consciousness of God is expanding. It's growing. It's becoming brighter. The light of it is becoming brighter. It's beautiful. But it takes time. It takes effort. It's, you know, we have to sit down and we really have to learn how to be still so that we can hear God, invite God in to speak to us so that our consciousness can grow and stand on firm ground. We don't want to build our lives on sand. We want to build it on rock. The church is you. And Jesus said to Peter, upon my rock I shall build my church. You are the rock. How big of a rock are we? Are we standing firm in truth? The truth that's going to set us free. The truth that Jesus taught. Not, not my own personal truth. Because it's changeable. The truth that we study here at Unity is the truth of God. It's principle. Just like the mathematical formulas cannot be changed, neither can the principles of life be changed. They just work. If you work them, we have to work the principles. We have to work the promises. We have to work the statements of truth. We are love made manifest. Do you really accept the concept that I am dearly loved by God and there is nothing in this world I can do or say as a human being that will turn God's back on me or shun me? Or leave me desolate. No, absolutely not. That's one thing I know for sure. I'm the one who has to forgive me. You're the one that has to forgive you. You're the one that has to take care of your spiritual consciousness. I can't do it for you. You can't do it for me. But we can all be supportive of each other and build it together. Faith is powerful. Faith is powerful. Reality, true reality, exists in the invisible realm that can be made manifest within us and around us. And that's God. We can be godly because really we are extensions of God. Like the sun beams in the sun, the moon beams from the moon, the waves and the ocean, none of it can be separated from the source. We ourselves cannot be separated from the source. We have experiences in life to help us grow in consciousness, if we take the time to sit down and say, what was my part in this? What can I learn from this? How can I become a better person from this? And instead of pointing the fingers at, oh, it's that person's fault, it's God's fault, it's the, you know, the corporation's fault. We have to stop blaming and just, we're so busy doing. We're just so busy doing all the time. Do we take that precious time daily to sit and say, God, I'm listening. 
and just focus on your breathing and say, God, I'm listening. God is, I am. God is, I am. And we are this beautiful flower in God's garden. We are this masterpiece in God's garden. We are the most unique thread in God's tapestry of life. Each and every one of us is a unique thread in God's tapestry of life. We are important. Do we feel important in life? Do we feel like we are working here on planet Earth to put forth more of God's good into expression? Being kind, being loving, being forgiving, you know, letting go of the stuff that is not of God within us, you know, opening ourselves up to the presence of God. I am open, I'm receptive, I'm responsive, I am obedient to the Holy Spirit. I say that every day, I've been saying it, I can't even tell you for how many years. The spirit of truth goes before me, making my way easy, joyous, successful, productive, and prosperous in every way. You know, um, Saul had an experience when he was going through, um, what's the term? The masses. Thank you. And um, when it happened, he went blind. All of a sudden, you know, he's on his way to the town of Damascus, and he goes blind. Has no idea why he went blind. He was blind for several days. And then when he got his vision back, he knew he was a different person. When you have an experience in your life, and when you finally get the message, aren't you a new person? Your consciousness shift, your heart opened up, your mind expanded. Yeah. Took him a while, but he got it. For 15 years, he kept learning from that experience. And sometimes, you know, there's an, a couple experiences I've had in my life that happened many years ago, but I'm still learning. It's just like forgiveness. You think you for, forgave the person or the situation, and then bang, one day it comes up. Oh, man, that resentment, that anger, oh, that bitterness just pops up again. But you know, you notice something. It's not as bad as it was. It's just another level that we have to clear up. Because sometimes I think if we... If it came at us all at once, we wouldn't be able to handle it. To be honest. The expansion of faith is a free gift. And we get that gift when we build our relationship with God. When we have that holy communication time with God. So we have to literally... Hear the truth and set us free. But if we don't ponder it, we don't think on it, we don't meditate on it, or have a discussion about it with other people, how's it going to grow? How's it going to grow? You know, I could go on for another 20 minutes, but that would take us into overtime. Like last week, you know, the Super Bowl, they had to go overtime, but maybe a couple minutes, but, you know. Nothing more than a couple minutes. But listen, it, listening is not easy because we sometimes we just want to jump in and, and fix the person. Well, first of all, they're not broken. And second of all, people might not want to be healed. Maybe they just need somebody to listen unconditionally and acknowledge their feelings. You know, when faith opens the mind, mountains are moved. Mountains of trouble, concerns, challenges. Faith is a very important part of our journey. Things or problems that we thought were impossible now become possible to solve 
because we have that consciousness of God alive, alert, and awake inside of us. Isn't that what we're all desiring? It's not what we want. It's not what we need. It is what we desire. Feel the difference in the words when you say them or think them. It's not a want or a need. And I believe desire comes from the core of our spiritual self that says, I desire this in my life. I desire to express more good. I desire to be more loving towards myself and others. I desire to be more giving of myself. So many people have so many walls up around them. Don't ask them any personal questions. That's being too way too friendly and meddling for some people. But you know what? I learn I'm as sick as my secrets. It's just that simple. So now I don't have no secrets, you know. I, I've, I've worked very diligently and very hard at loving myself. So if something did come up, that I could still love myself through that experience so that truth can set me free. Am I making sense there? Yes. Yeah. I, I, it's too much of a heavy burden. It's, the secrets are poisoning to our bodies. It stresses us out. Is there anybody in here that really wants more stress in their life? I think we all got plenty, right? Nobody needs more. So no, you know, just take a simple truth. It doesn't, you know, the promises, take the promises and meditate upon the promises of God. You know, ask, seek, you shall find. God loves you with an everlasting love. I shall never leave you desolate. Jesus is there, you know, for you to talk to. Myrtle Fillmore, that's how she got her, her healing of TB. That's how she got her healing, folks. That's how this whole movement was started. Because she heard something at a lecture. She went home and day after day, she spent at least an hour in a room, quietly in a chair, and a chair across from her, where she invited the presence of Jesus Christ to come in and to pray with her and to illuminate her, to inspire her, and to heal her. Why can we not do the same thing that Myrtle Fillmore did? Whoever knew at that moment in time that there would be a huge prayer movement that would manifest from her healing and Charles. You don't know what you're capable of. And we got to start waking up and saying, yes, I, with God, I can do all things. Through the Christ in me is my hope of glory. Take, take your shield, take your, 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 your armor and go out there in the world, your armor of love, your armor of joy, your armor of kindness, your armor of God, and just go forth and live your life the best way you know how in that moment in time. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Meditate upon good things. There you go. Thank you, everybody.